what happens to a mortgage when the owner of the property dies? Um, this is a really good question and we'll explore a little bit about how the mortgage and death relate to one another and the protections that are afforded under federal law. But before we get in, let's take a step back and talk about what a mortgage actually is. The mortgage is money that is given to a person to help them purchase a property and in exchange the person promises to pay it back. Now normally a mortgage company will record a lien on the property or a deed of trust. So they are secure knowing that if you ever sell it or refinance it, they will actually be paid their amounts. In addition, in the contract with the mortgage company, there's normally what we call a due on sale clause, which means that there are certain things that will happen or may happen in the future. And if these things happen, we are um, okay or you're giving us permission to come and force you to pay back all the money that we lent you. Essentially a due on sale clause that's what the mortgage company is telling the borrower, that if you change ownership of your property <clears throat> from you to someone else, we have a right to ask you to pay the entire thing. The due on sale clause gets triggered. Now, knowing this information that there is a due on sale clause in almost every single mortgage contract, there is a federal law that protects uh, consumers, protects borrowers in certain circumstances. So it protects the borrower from a mortgage company, forcing them to pay it back. So basically the federal government in the St. Germain uh, Act is the Garn St. Germain Act, if you wanna Google it and read about it, the federal government is saying, hey borrower, under certain circumstances, we will protect you and the mortgage company will not be forced to ask you to pay back or activate their due on sale clause. And these are the circumstances that will afford you that protection. And there's an entire list of different scenarios. So we'll talk about a few of them. Number one, most importantly, if you take your property and you transfer it into a revocable trust, that transaction is not considered a change of ownership for the due on sale clause. So the mortgage company doesn't have a right to come back and tell you to pay off your mortgage just because you did estate planning and transferred it to a revocable trust. So that's very important. Number two, if you transfer to a spouse or a child during your lifetime, um, this is also considered an exempt transaction, so they will not be able to come back and ask you to pay the entire mortgage balance. So this is only during lifetime and it's only to a spouse <clears throat> or um, actual child, right? The third scenario is extremely important and it's in case of death. So if you pass away and your relatives inherit the actual property from you, they are afforded protection. They will not be obligated to pay off that mortgage immediately just because they inherited the property. The due on sale clause is not activated according to the St. Garn Germain Act. So they will be afforded some protection. Um, mostly in these scenarios, the mortgage company assigns the loan over to the new relative or the new owner of the property that inherited. Now, these are some of the scenarios. You have to be careful that your transaction um, falls within these exceptions so that it doesn't trigger the due on sale clause. The most common one that we see as estate attorneys are the trust transfer, which we do on a daily basis. They do not trigger the due on sale clause. Um, also, if death purposes, when we transfer to the new relatives that are the co new owners or co-owners as a result of death, it doesn't trigger the uh, due on sale clause. And also, I wanna mention, even if you don't have a trust and you are co-owners with your spouse, or you have another co-owner, just because one co-owner passed away doesn't mean that the mortgage company is gonna force the other co-owner to pay off the mortgage, okay? So there's also a tiny little exception for co-ownership or tenancy ownership when you're jointly owning a property and one person dies or two people die, the third person is not gonna be held accountable to pay the entire mortgage. So these are just some things that you should consider or you should know about. Um, knowing your rights will help you navigate and transact properly so that you're not being pushed by the mortgage company into a refinance that you didn't want because your dad died and you inherited the property and you don't have good credit and you're not allowed to keep his very, very low interest rate. So knowing just this one federal act protects you is extremely important. So you could just tell the mortgage company, hey, the Garn St. Germain Act prevents you from making me pay you this entire mortgage amount just because I inherited this property from my father. Um, and that should snowball and kick the actual property into a proper legal department with the mortgage company where there are attorneys or staff or a team that is knowledgeable about the act and can transact and transfer or assign the loan to you properly. 
instead of forcing you to go out and refinance and pay off this mortgage by getting another loan that might be a higher interest rate or worse um, terms for you. So these are just some of the things to consider. Um, it might be a good idea for you to consult with an attorney if you are in a situation where a loved one has passed away and you're actually transferring it to you or whether that's through probate or a trust administration. Our team is always uh, happy to help. We are licensed in California. I'm a certified specialist here in California and I would be happy to uh, take a look at your matter and see if it's something our office can help with. Feel free to schedule a free consultation.